but I don't know him personally. I've heard of him. Uh, when did you first get this this uh, study? I'm sorry. When did you first read this study? I think two years ago. Oh, which study? The propofol uh, study. Uh, propofol induced sleep: the efficacy and safety in patients I think it was with refractory chronic I'm primary sorry. insomnia. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is not good for the report. Repeat your entire question, please. Sorry. Please wait for the sorry. answer. When did you first read the study entitled Propofol Induced Sleep, Efficacy and Safety in Patients with Refractory Chronic Primary Insomnia? Approximately in, I would say, in August, a couple of months ago. And who gave you the, the copy of the study? Uh, I looked it up online. And, and what con what caused you to look it up online? I was preparing for my uh, testimony here. And did somebody tell you about this study? No. You were just looking up uh, propofol and insomnia? I'm constantly doing, I, I can't tell you how many how much time I've spent on the computer in the last couple of months researching for this case. And yes, I was, I was looking up propofol use. Okay, and then you, you, you testified earlier that you've never heard of a doctor using propofol for insomnia. I've never heard of anyone in the United States of America using it. There's this article in Taiwan that you quoted people using it, but I've never heard of anyone using it. Okay, so does that mean you don't know of anybody personally who's no. done it? I've, I've never heard of anyone using propofol for sleep until Dr. Murray. Actually, I should have said, answered yes, Dr. Murray. Uh, <clears throat> The people that you know that use propofol, you don't know any gastroenterologists, don't know any dentists, don't know any pulmonologists. You do know what happens, though. The only people you know are anesthesiologists. Yes, sir. And anesthesiologists are basically, whenever they use propofol, they're doing it in a hospital setting with respect to a surgery of yes, some sir. sort, aren't they? You've never heard of propofol being used for anything other than surgery, have you? I don't think that's what, that's not what he said. The objection sustained. He talked about the dental, dentists and also uh, gastroenterologists. Go ahead. Have you ever heard of propofol being used for anything other than surgery? Yes. What other things? We use it for sometimes for sedation in the ICU on an intubated patient. Okay, so... And that's deep sedation. That, that's uh, usually uh, moderate to deep, it's just whatever level that the uh, patient is comfort. So you've never heard of anybody using propofol for conscious sedation? No. And is it your opinion that propofol should never be used for purposes of conscious sedation. Um, I've never seen it used for conscious sedation because, again, it has a narrow therapeutic half-life. I'm sorry, na narrow therapeutic window. So it can cause deep sedation. So I've, I've never used it for moderate sedation. I think the guidelines say it's mostly for deep sedation. But it's, I think, um, did I answer your question? Sorry. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure if I understand your answer. I have never heard of it given for moderate sedation. And so, based upon the fact that you've never heard of it being used for moderate sedation or conscious sedation, you are of the opinion that it should not be used for that? Um, I'm not an expert in propofol. Do you use lorazepam? I told you earlier I use it sometimes orally, not never IV. Never use it IV? No. 
we're, we're getting into asked and answered in 352 territory, Mr. Flanagan. Thank you. Okay. Now, you, <clears throat> you indicated that there was an ambi bag there on the floor, but Murray didn't use it. Yes, sir. What makes you think so? He described uh, the resuscitation as using mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, and he did not use the ambo bag. You also said you should use a, 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 a blood pressure cuff? Yes, sir. And what makes you think he didn't use it? It was, uh, I was told it was, it was not on the patient. He didn't also report a blood pressure during, during any of this. You indicated you were told. Is it, now we're using something other than Dr. Murray's statement? No, I th no. when I was looking at the items found, there was, an, uh, there was a blood pressure cuff not on Mr. Jackson. And there was a pulse oximeter? There was a pulse oximeter. They have a list of all the equipment, yes, sir. And when it was found, it was not on Mr. Jackson either, was it? Nope. Uh, there was oxygen? Yes, sir. But the tank was empty when it was found, wasn't it? Um, uh, I, have, I don't know. Are you of opinion that he wasn't using oxygen? No, I, I, he was. Dr. Murray reported that he was on a nasal cannula oxygen. Now, you've, assuming that Dr. Murray gave the, the the 25 milligrams over three to five minutes, you would, you would agree that you've already indicated that's a very small dose. It might not even be effective to get a person to sleep. Do you know when it was that Murray left the patient's side? Um, I think Dr. Murray say, states after uh, a few minutes, um, at some point, after a few minutes, I can only guess. Okay, he well, doesn't specify. He indicated it was about 10.40, 10.50 that he, he gave the, the propofol. Okay. Uh, and you've got from other sources that it's about 12 o'clock, the, the point in time that he discovered that Mr. Jackson wasn't breathing. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that you've probably got it from other sources that there was a phone call made at about 11.18, correct? I guess, yes, sir. Do you know anything that happened between 11 and 12? Um, no. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I have to re review my Do you know assessment. how long Dr. Murray continued to watch Mr. Jackson? No. Uh, now, when uh, Mr. Jackson was found... Uh, your indication is right around 12 o'clock. Do you know what Dr. Murray did? Give me a minute just to, re can I re-review that, that part of, the, of his notes? Sure. Okay, so it says here, I after I, I the propofol, it's an unknown time since he gave the propofol, I sat there and watched him long enough period that I felt comfortable. So there's, we don't know how long he monitored him for afterwards, right? And, and I'm sorry. And, and then I needed to go to the bathroom. And what was your, your next question? Okay. Now, what did you assume that to mean when he said he watched him long enough until he felt comfortable? I have no idea. Uh, and at some point in time, he went to the bathroom. Do you know anything else he did between... Say 11 and 12. I monitor 10. No. Nope. Did he state the time that he went to the bathroom? No. Nope. What time it was? No, he, he didn't. Okay. When he came in, he found Mr. Jackson not breathing. Uh, would you be of the opinion that based upon phone records and what you've been told, it's right around 12 o'clock? If that's what's been established, yes. And do you have any idea as to Mr. Jackson's time of death? Uh, Mr. Jackson's time of death, I think, is 2.26 in the afternoon. Okay, so you think he was alive at 1 o'clock? 
No, that was when he was declared dead by Dr. Cooper, okay. I think. What, what, do you, what did you, based upon what you've read, what did you conclude as to the time of death of Mr. Jackson? That was, the, he was pronounced a couple hours later, about two and a half hours later. Yeah. But he was probably clinically dead there. I wasn't there, but he was probably clinically dead on, on apparently on arrival to the emergency room. Okay. And did you read the paramedic statement where they felt when they arrived at 1226, he had been dead for a period of time longer than 20 to 30 minutes? I, I've read it, but I didn't incorporate it in this report. I just well, used Dr. Murray's testimony, his own words. Okay. Did you? So you don't know <clears throat> when the paramedics uh, concluded that they thought he was dead. I'm I'm aware of it. How'd you become aware of it? I, I have the report and I read it. The paramedics report. Yes. Okay. So they concluded that he'd been dead for at least 20, 30 minutes at 12:26, correct? Um, I don't know if he was. I don't know if that's true. No, I, that's not true, I think. Okay. And they called in, they called in uh, the fact that they had been working on him for about 20 minutes and to, to UCLA Medical Center? Yes, sir. And the doctor there told them to, to stop the call? Yes, sir. Because they thought he was dead? Yes, sir. Uh, but you think he died sometime later? Objection. Sustained. Do you think he died sometime later? Misstates the testimony. Ask and answer. It's been asked and answered, and it mistakes. Assumes facts and not evidence. Sustained. Okay. Was at 12 o'clock, was Michael Jackson savable? One more time, sorry. At 12 o'clock, was Michael Jackson savable? At Michael, at 12 o'clock, okay, are you, is, was Michael Jackson savable when Dr. Murray found him? Is that yes. what you're asking me? Yes. Yes. And what were the chances? What would you estimate the chances of him being able to save him? Very. Is this assuming Dr. Murray was gone for just two minutes? I think there. There's, I'm not assuming anything. There, I'm, there, I'm, I'm assuming. Just, just a moment. There, there are many assumptions in the question. So, as phrased, the objection is sustained. If there's a partial answer, it's stricken. Disregard. You may refine the question. Based upon Dr. Murray finding him not breathing, his eyes open, fixed and dilated at 12 o'clock. He did not find him fixed and dilated pupils. When he, at 12 o'clock, Dr. Murray left him for two minutes. He was alive at uh, supposedly at 11.58. So he left him only for two minutes. And you, you cannot, what happens is, you ha what would happen is he would have to stop breathing. His oxygen level, he's still having oxygen in the 90s. It takes a few minutes for the oxygen to go down and for the heart rate to go up. So the fact that he only left him for two minutes, he's savable. When we do conscious sedation, and that sometimes happens, people stop breathing. So he should have, one, he should have been monitored at, at that time. But even at that time, when st someone stops breathing, we use the bag mask, get him oxygen, try and arouse him, try and reverse what any medications ha uh, that we give. And he was definitely savable at that point. Also, he had a delay in calling for help. And if they would have gotten there six minutes later, Mr. Jackson would have been alive. You used the term two minutes. That's what Dr. Murray Dr. says. Dr. Murray did say two minutes. Do you think that he was gone from Michael Jackson's side for only two minutes? He was estimating from, from this report that he was gone According to what I know, when we leave, when, when a, what can happen in two minutes, he's probably, I would say, maybe a few more minutes than two, I would guess. But I'm trusting Dr. Murray's very own words and his testimony. That's what I made my report. And Dr. Murray also said that he estimated that he'd, he'd gone maybe at 11 o'clock. Yeah, it would have been nice to have medical records and documentation.